What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Jim Leader Geo, and this is the locker room pre-match show of week nine of the GBA season four. This week, we're going up against Crimson Seabad and the Detroit Steel Wings. And um, right now, it's roughly somewhere between eight and nine million degrees in this room, so <laughs> I'm actually dying. Um, and having my computer on is no fun right now. You can see this in my face. I am visibly reddened and this is not sunburn. I am not sunburned at the moment. I am just very, very red from the GD heat. Um, we're going to go over my opponent's potential 11 Pokemon and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the threats I think he's going to bring and we'll go into my team and sort of discuss the concept of this week. What's sort of going on and what's going through my head. My opponent's team is Mega Beedrill, Skarmory, Gothitelli, Gothitelle? Gothitelle. For Alligator, Jolteon, Rhyperior, Weezing, Clefable, Chandelier, Kecleon, and Sableye. Now, um, at initial glance and with my initial calcs, there's a few things that are interesting about this team. For one, it is the only team in the league that... Volume. That more often than not, my Pokemon match up better than his Pokemon. In most one-on-one -on -one scenarios, most of my Pokemon beat most of his Pokemon 101. But here's the other catch. He has a few threats, three of them, which destroy most of my team. Even if I try and run sets just to counter them, most of them still do an incredible job against my team because most of the counters can't switch in against that Pokemon. They can just revenge it. So, I... I've expressed my distaste with this team multiple times. I think a lot of people saw it early, but my team is starting to really bother me because it's forcing me to engage in play styles that are not my play style. I play balanced, I play stall, I play semi-stall, but I don't play hyper offense. And there's really no other way around it with my team because I don't have any safe switch-ins. Even running weird defensive sets on stuff most of my Pokemon don't match up well. I have no consistent recovery. None, except Roost on Scizor and Moltres, who have been my leading offensive Pokemon this season. So let's go into uh, let's go into my team builder here, and we will talk about the team I'm bringing this week. The rain is coming, as you can see here. We got Dulla Bills and Ultron. Um, We'll go uh, one by one, I'll sort of talk concept a little bit along the way. Fox is making his return, he's not an unheard of set, pretty similar to what I normally do. Here's the big thing, you're going to be like, Defog? Like, what's the point in that? Here's why. Uh, the six Pokemon I predict he's bringing. He's for sure being, bringing Clefable, he's never had a match in this league with this poke without this Pokemon. Clefable is coming. He's going to bring Skarmory because it walls a majority of my uh, offensive scary. I just... <sighs> We're moving on from this. We're not going to get distracted by this right now. He's bringing Skarmory. Um, it's, it matches up very well against my physical threats. My team is predominantly physical threatening Pokemon. Um, although if you actually look at my matches, I brought a hell of a lot more special to most matches. I mean, even look at my team right now. Two chains, while it could be physical or special, you could you could argue is special. Bunny is special, Dollar Bills is special, and Fox is special. I actually only have two physical sweepers here. Um, and I'll get into something with uh, Electivire in a second. Um, Skarmory is coming, Scary is coming. Uh, I think Sableye is coming um, because Sableye, there's an L in there, don't judge me, I can't write with this mouth. <laughs> Sableye is coming because I think the priority burn is going to be really, really useful. Then I think he's going to start bringing threats, I think Jolteon is coming. Um, I think Feraligator is coming just because you can't... Negator... I mean, Feraligator is a big threat in um, in this format. He's got just the right amount of bulk, and he can run a pretty devastating um, Dragon Dance set. And uh, I just, in general, think he's going to be a, an issue for this team, especially because I'm bringing the rain this week. But I couldn't, I couldn't not do it. Um, I also think in that last spot, this is where things get a little complicated. I'm not sure the type of team he's going to bring here. Things I noted, uh, Rhyperior can almost one-hit KO most of the Pokemon on my team if it's Banded set. 
Chandelure is a big problem because it has the potential to one-hit KO things, depending on the item it carries. It's base speed 80, which means it outspeeds a lot of my Pokemon, but the Pokemon it doesn't outspeed can one-hit KO in return, with the exception of Fox, which is one of the few Pokemon it can't one-hit- no, it can if it packs Thunderbolt. Never mind, see? I don't know, I think Chandelure is probably coming, I think Chandelure is going to be the last one. PK and Shandy, I'm just going to write Shandy. Um, and then the last few Pokemon I'll just go over, why I didn't choose to bring- I like- Gothitelli maybe instead of Jolteon, um, but really, it doesn't match up super well. One thing of note is that it can switch in on Mega Swampert, and, or it can trap Mega Swampert and one hit KO it with Energy Ball. But the problem is that it doesn't outspeed Mega Swampert, even, well, it would outspeed it if it weren't Mega Evolved, but um, it can't survive two hits. So if it switched in on me and took an attack and then the next turn it would die. If it came in on me on the same switch in, double switch or something, uh, then it could outspeed me on the first turn and one hit KO. But these are all just like weird circumstances that I'm sure Crimson doesn't even want to see himself in. Um, it doesn't do very well against other things. It can one-hit KO Moltres, but again, it's outsped, and I can U-turn on it. Um, Gudra, even with Psy Shock, it doesn't do enough, and in return, Gudra can do a massive amount, and Gudra probably outspeeds it. Uh, Politoed, again, even with Thunderbolt and Energy Ball, can do a massive amount of damage, but Politoed can outspeed it, and Hydro Pump will do a massive amount of damage. Uh, just lots of weird matchups where it, it maybe it goes kill for kill, but in general, you shouldn't build a team such that a Pokemon can kill one and then die. That's normally not a very effective strategy. Um, the only real time that suicide Pokemon like that are okay is if they've done what they need to do. Like, I think Explosion is good if it's a, it's a trump card to major threats. Like, if you're looking at a post team and you realize that, say, your Mega Glalie is up against the one Pokemon on your team that's stopping a sweep by another one of your Pokemon, then an Explosion is okay because... Uh, a refrigerate explosion is nothing to chortle at. Um, chortle is a type of laugh. Um, and uh, the other time it's okay is if you're like a, a support set and don't have reliable recovery. Bronzong is a good example. You get your rocks up, uh, maybe you set up screens or something, and you're like, well, I'm done here. Boom. And then there you go. You get a big amount of damage off. That's okay. Tones like that, it's okay. S like suicide stealth rock leads, they'll uh, get rocks up with a sash, and then they'll maybe explode on the way down. Stuff like that's okay. But uh, going one for one, that's not what a Pokemon should be aiming to do in this, especially not in this meta. So I think, I, I don't know, I don't think he'll bring Glothitelli, but I have made sort of some plans just in case he does show up. I think this is probably his team of six. Uh, Weezing is also a really good matchup, but I've packed some things on here to deal with that. So let's go over the sets. Uh, Skarmory is running Naive Nature because whatever about special defense. Fox usually dies to rocks and then something inevitable, or something inevitable regardless. Um, or because I sack him. Like, he doesn't normally just die to special, like, special attacks? No, I don't think so. So, uh, speed is just enough speed to outspeed any of his base 80s um, with this investment. Now, I could have... Uh, you can't go modest 252, unfortunately. It has to be a plus speed nature, and this is the uh, minimum I needed in order to hit that outspeed mark of his base 80s, uh, because he's got a huge speed gap in there. Um, of his like lower speed tier Pokemon, 80 is the highest, and that's Chandler. And then following that, his next slowest Pokemon is Jolteon at 130. So um, I could have maybe scarfed to try and outspeed a Jolteon, but... Um, we'll get into that why I, did, I, I got, no, oh, spoiler alert, viral is scarfed. So let's just keep moving. Um, I put the rest in special attack and I had dump points. I could have put them in attack, but I'm not positive I'm going to be using a U-turn as opposed to I'm positive I'm going to be at risk of taking an attack. So HP is the rest of them. So uh, that's my Moltres set. Life Orb, Hurricane because I'm bringing the rain. Uh, overheat because... Overheat pairs well with U-turn. Overheat one turn, you turn the next turn for momentum when you bring in a potential threat against you. And Defog, because uh, I might have mentioned before, the six Pokemon I think he's bringing, one of them is Skarmory, and I'm pretty sure of the Pokemon that I think he's bringing, the only other one that learns Stealth Rock is Clefable. And I really don't see him putting... Clefable's already running four move pool syndrome, so I don't see him putting it on Clefable. I predict him bringing Skarmory for rocks, and... Uh, 
as soon as Skarmory hits the field, Fox is coming in, and I'm probably defog away the rocks, uh, unless, like, I get rocks up too or something like that. We'll get into this, but probably I can just defog it away, then Fox doesn't need to worry about it. So, pretty much because the only person I think that has a chance of bringing hazards that would come to this match is Skarmory, and Fox matches up so well against Skarmory, Defog is there because as soon as I see Skarmory, I'm not going to give him a free turn. Fox is coming in, scaring him out, and getting the Defog off every time. So that's why I'm running Defog on Moltres this week. Uh, the next Pokemon, I'm going to skip Ultron and go to Dollar Bills. Dollar Bills is a, a bulky offensive rain setter set. So I'm going Scald, Hydro Pump, Parasong, and Rest. Now, you're like, why the double water coverage? Um, there is basically nothing that hits that Dollar Bills can carry against any of the Pokemon that my opponent could possibly have that would get harder, hit harder than Hydro Pump by any coverage move. Because uh, Dollar Bills is always going to be in the rain because he doesn't really have anything to stop the rain. Hydro Pump just hits so much harder than everything. Like I've done, I've done the calculations. If you think about it, Hydro Pump gets 1.5 times modifier for being in the rain and 1.5 times modifier for being a stab. Um, so Hydro Pump, a 110 power move, uh, I, don't full, I don't fully remember the math here, but it's like times 1.5 makes it 165, times 1.5 again, um, uh, whatever, it makes it like 200 and something and then you divide that by half, it's like a 130 power attack. You resist that, you're still running just too much damage. So, there's nothing. Like, uh, for Alligator, I was like, okay, maybe I can bring something. That's the only Pokemon on his team that resists water. Case in point. The only Pokemon on his team that resists water is for Alligator. So, Hydro Pump, you'd think, oh, what, what could hit harder? Like a Thunderbolt, maybe? Yeah, except that Dollar Bills doesn't learn Thunderbolt. What about like grass knot don't learn grass knot don't learn energy ball don't learn anything outside of a hidden power that would hit for alligator super effective and hydro pump hits harder than all of those coverage moves so why not bring hydro pump because it's going to be better against everybody uh scald is there because sometimes a burn is more valuable than hitting someone with a hydro pump but against this team weirdly not i probably could just run entirely just hydro pump but i didn't so uh this is the set i'm bringing perish song is there because Cleffable is a threat. Did I say Clef? Oh God, I just cannot speak today. It's so hot, guys. It is so hot right now. I'm actually dying of heat. I will die in the middle of, before this video is done and edited and put up. Anyway, um, Clefable is, if he comes in on any of my special threats uh, that can't two hit KO him and start setting up Calm Minds and then recovering on my face, Parasong is there to just say no. Uh, this is my anti Clefable. My big anti Clefable moment is Parasong. I went rest at the end there. <sighs> there are other options, and I might want to use them at some other point. So I'm not going to talk about them. But uh, I, I opted to, I opted to go for rest there. If I'm up against someone who can't, like really do that much to me like a sableye maybe i'll uh maybe i'll get a, a rest off dollar bills actually as an offensive threat is very potent against this guy's team he can two hit ko every single member of his team except for alligator who i can hit for a maximum of 51 percent. so there's a chance i could two hit ko him um another pokemon defensive sets of clefable can can take two hydro pumps and uh finally well, no, that's it. Every single of the Pokemon can hit two hit KO'd. So that's uh, that's my Dollar Bills set. We're gonna go back to Ultron here. Ultron is running a Waterfall Earthquake Power Up Refresh set. Um, I made sure to make him Swampert, not Mega Swampert, over here. Pack him a Swampert. I, his set is designed so that he can outspeed Mega B Drill in the rain, and the rest is put into HP and uh, then maximizing my attack stat adamant. So, uh, not much to say about this. Honestly, Waterfall and Earthquake's all I really need, and Earthquake is pretty much only for things that are hit super effective by it and not by Waterfall. So, like Chandelure? I mean, I would use Waterfall if it's in the rain pretty much no matter what. The only thing that resists it is Feraligator who would get hit harder by Earthquake. 
and Jolteon, who gets one hit carried by anything. So, uh, Power Up Punch is just there to really facilitate a guaranteed sweep, and it's one of the ways I will aim to overcome uh, wheezing with some weird Power Up Punch, refresh away the burn scenarios. Um, we'll move on from that. He's got a very standard set. This is Ultron. You guys know him. Uh, Bunny Sore is next now. Bunny Sore has been my pride and joy this season. Pretty much the only Pokemon that I can consistently rely on to switch into things without immediately dying. He's running a standard Assault Vest set, Hydration, to because there's a lot of will o -Wisp potential. He has a ton of will o Whispers on his team. So, uh, bring Hydration here to not have to worry about that. We're running Draco Meteor, Sludge, Wave, Thunder, and Muddy Water. Uh, Draco Meteor hits everything on his team the hardest except a few key threats so that's going to be my go-to move sludge wave is for the potential clefable clefable my word clefable switch in um i'm i'm just getting all over the place with my words today guys and i apologize and i can tell you precisely why i am doing this it's because the temperature today is literally breaking the thermometer so like this is this is not like this looks like if I like a loaf of bread and then we were trying to inject it with like filling. So you'd like slide like a knife down here, like a like a tongued out knife, and then you'd pour whatever liquid you wanted down here and it'd go like, there you go, that's how you make filled bread. In case you guys are wondering, that's how you make like, you know, jelly filled donuts and any type of bread that's filled with like cheese or whatever, you can do that. That's how you do it, you fill up bread. But that's actually supposed to be a thermometer, like literally ripping out through the bottom of the thermometer, but yellow isn't a very good color for that. Um, Draco Meteor everything. Sludge Wave for the Clefable switch in. Thunder for the, he predicts I'm gonna go for the Sludge Wave and he instead switches in something that resists the Thunder Wave, or well, the Sludge Wave like um, Skarmory. The reason Sludge Wave, not Sludge Bomb, is that I don't care about poisoning things because the Fable is probably uh, Magic Guard. So, uh, and then Muddy Water is because specifically I need almost all of my Pokemon to be able to one or two hit KO Rhyperior, and otherwise this set fails to do that. Muddy Water one hit KOs Rhyperior in and out of the ring. I could have run Water Pulse for the 100% accuracy, but it does not one hit KO um, outside of the ring. So that's the reason I brought this. Uh, I didn't really care about outspeeding stuff. Most of his Pokemon, his defensive Pokemon are base speed 60 and stuff. The Pokemon that are faster than that, I either wall already or won't outspeed without max speed investment, um, or I'm switching out on them anyway. So like Mega Beedrill, I'm not staying in with Bunny Shore against Mega Beedrill, um, I think. Oh, actually, I would stay in with Bunny Store against Mega Beedrill because I can one-hit KO him with Jaco Meteor, and he fails to one-hit KO me with Poison Jab as an adamant set. So I actually would do that, but the point is uh, I'm not running in Speed and Bees because I don't need to. Uh, that gives him a chance to Speed Creep me, but so be it. Uh, max Special Attack, Max HP to hit uh, highest possible stat we can get here, and an odd number there. One point into defense here because it's a throwaway point and we're dropping my attack stat to zero here just in case something has foul play like the Sableye. We're going to Viral. Viral. Now, I honestly was running a special set on this guy for a long time. The reason I switched it, a um, couple of reasons. Uh, I went through, this guy went through a lot of iterations before he made it to my team. For a little while he was a scissor. For a long while he was a scissor because I wanted something against that Clefable, uh, something guaranteed. Everything has stuff that's pretty good for the Clefable, but ultimately I am in big trouble if he gets a couple of Calm Minds up and I can't get Dollar Bills in to get a, uh, a Parish Song off. Um, normally I should outspeed with Dollar Bills against the Clefable if it's a Calm Mind set. It's probably not running speed EVs, so I can get him in as a Revenge and get a Parish Song off, but it's a problem. So uh, he's... Electivire is massive setup fodder if he's special, but he had a really good move pool where he would go Volt Switch, Psychic, Earthquake, and then I forget what my last one, what my last move I was packing was, but those three moves are pretty great. Volt Switch hits everything except uh, Jolteon, which I would Earthquake on, and at Modest Choice Scarf, it's almost a one-hit KO, but it isn't. 
I'm scarfed with enough speed investment to outspeed um, a timid max speed Jolteon. And then I put um, the rest of it into attack, 4 into HP, and 16 into special attack. The reason, and I went uh, lonely because uh, his defense is so piss poor. Anyway, he's going to die to any of the major physical offensive threats that are on this team. Uh, the reason I put the 16 there, not 20 there, is that the 20 there only got me to 153, and most of the things that are going to kill, most of the things that are going to hit Electivire are just going to, they're either going to hit so weak that it doesn't matter, like it's always going to be a 4 hit KO, this does not actually change any of the calcs significantly by adding extra there, but, you know, a little bit harder hitting Volt Switch might be a good thing, because Volt Switch is probably going to be the most common move I'm using on this Electivire if the, if the match goes my way. So, that's the, uh, the mixed scarf set that I'm running on Viral. Uh, he's a good potential switch into Jolteon if I predict the electric type move, but I, I don't know. That, he might be scared to do that because I've got Ultron, Bunny Store, and Viral that all just eat that up. Um, let's see, let's move on now. Last Pokemon on my team is a uh, bulky defensive two chains. Mesprit with leftovers. He's Levitate, running Stealth Rocks. He's gonna be my Stealth Rocker, my potential lead. Almost certainly my lead, unless I... No, almost certainly my lead. There's very few scenarios where I don't think I would lead with him. Uh, I'd have to see it game day. U-turn says, after Stealth Rock, you turn out, and also to prevent me from getting walled by Gothitelli. Uh, Psychic is my primary stab, and the things that resist the Psychic get hit super affected by Thunderbolt. So... Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much, that was why I opted to go for this set. We're obviously max special attack, the rest is going into HP. I know that uh, I have U-turn and this is going to weaken the U-turn. However, U-turn's not, like, with Scizor and stuff, U-turn is there really for damage. But, um, I couldn't really drop anything else. The 101 speed tier is significant because it outspeeds the potential uh, speed invested defensive Pokemon he could have and uh, I couldn't drop any of my defenses. So I, I just dropped, I, I threw it into attack, lowering, I don't think it really matters that much. So he's gonna be running modest. Mesprit's a good Pokemon, guys, he, he really is, but uh, this time I didn't wanna, I didn't opt to run him offensive. I, I thought the Stealth Rocks would be really important. Uh, it'll be really good if he brings Mega Beedrill, it'll be really good against Chandelure. It will go a long way to breaking Skarmory's Sturdy. And just in general, I think it's going to be a big deal for me to have them up. So uh, that's what 2 Chains is doing, and that's my team at a glance. Um, the big things I've noted... Oh, I might change Viral out for Scizor again. I'm not sure. Um, big things I've noted. There's going to be a lot of sacrificing Pokemon in this game, unfortunately. He has a lot of uh, Pokemon that are very serious potential setup sweepers. Clefable, very common to run like either Cosmic Power or Calm Mind. You know, he, uh, Sableye can run Calm Mind too, I don't think it will, but it could. Uh, we've got the Rhyperior can run, I think, I think it can run Rock Polish or something like that. We've got Dragon Dance on the Feraligator. You could even run Swords Dance on the Feraligator. Just, there's a lot of setup things and if I get knocked into a bad situation there's gonna be stuff going down this is really i mean if we're getting down to it guys let's go for my tiny little rant at the end of the video here because we're pretty much done um part of why i hate this team is i just don't have safe switch ins everything is scared of everything because i have so many four times weaknesses i have a lot of weird frail pokemon corners like bunny Sore, so bulky except his defense is so bad and then viral you know like his special defense isn't horrible, his HP isn't horrible, but just put it together, he can't really take most things to hit KO. 2 Chains has been just an absolute gem for me this season. I love 2 Chains. Um, Dollar Bills is... I, I always make him kind of bulky, but realistically, 90-75 defense, you know, he's like not that bulky. Uh, Fox, his massive weaknesses make up for what weird middling defenses he has. Ultron again. If something, do if someone doesn't bring any grass moves to the match, then yeah, Ultron's great. Uh, he becomes 100, 110, and 110. That's absolutely massive defenses, but that almost never happens. Just in general, my Pokemon, I just, I'm, 
I don't have safe switch-ins, and one of the things I'm actually really good at is predicting switches, but in this team, you might notice that a lot of my games, and this is to actually to answer a lot of you people who were like, oh, take a risk sometime. The problem is, with the way my team is set up with hyper offense, a lot of the time I have like offensive threats that if they go down, I have no ways of killing Pokemon on his team. You've seen it before in other matches, like my answers to say Quagsire uh, against Nips. Uh, I lost Bunny Sword and I lost two chains, and it was like, uh, how am I gonna kill this thing now? You know, like. I run into issues with losing the hyper offensive Pokemon, and normally when you build a hyper offensive team, you need to have some semblance of switch in potential. But in a league like this, I don't have that because everyone's prepared for my Pokemon, so I really lose that. I lose out on that a lot, and it's a big problem. It's become a real issue for me with team building when I start noticing hey, every one of these Pokemon just has the potential to pack coverage to just murder me. To absolutely murder me. And that's going to be something I'm looking to correct next season. Uh, I built this team not anticipating it would be so hyper-offensive. I thought I had a good amount of bolt going in with a lot of these Pokemon, but all of that is hindered by the fact that all my bulky-ish Pokemon, my Pokemon with a good amount of bulk and good firepower, are too slow, so they get outsped and lose two hit KO wars, or they uh, have a four times weakness, and they, that can really be taken advantage of. So I. Just, I'm just getting really tired of this team. <laughs> looking forward to next season. Looking forward to uh, to the D-League, guys. D-League's coming up soon. we got a lot of great applicants. We're going to have more information about that for you guys later. I also want to point out one last thing, please. I need you guys to stop. I, this has been really escalating too much. And I've had to make a comment for it every time. I have slip of the tongue syndrome because I speak really fast in these videos. And sometimes I don't get to spell check myself. Sometimes I say stab when I mean coverage. It is a common slip of the tongue. Please stop telling me what stab means, guys. I know what it means. I've been playing competitive for, like, seven years. I know what it means. Um, I just, it, it comes out. Sometimes I'm talking about things, and I'm looking at the stab moves, and I look at a coverage move, and I'm like, oh, and that move is for stab against this guy. And then it's a, it's a mistake. So, dear God, Stop pointing it out. Not helpful. It's getting really annoying. It's If you go back, it's in pretty much every one of my videos of all time. So, no more, please. Thank you. Um, anyway, so uh, this is going to be the team builder for this. Wish me luck. I'm going to take a shower because I'm sweating like balls and I want to do my hair and I want to look good for the camera when it uh, when it comes time to battling Crimson. I need, uh, I need this win to stay in it for the playoff race, guys. Unfortunately, um... Uh, you know, I'm still I'm still that one match behind Hank, and it's kind of do or die this week. If Hank wins his game and I win my game, he's forced to lose very badly in his next game for me to keep my playoff hopes alive. So, you know, I'm happy with having the one of the best records of the newbies outside of Hank um, this season. I, you know, can't can't be mad about that, and I think I've done really well given the limitations on my team. Uh, I think I've adapted to the format well, so you guys be looking out for me next season, I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you for real, but uh, as always, my name is Jim Leader Geo, you guys are the challengers, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.